Set time now, 6.48. Let's have a chat with Ben now. Uh, Sir Philip Green's retail empire. But we have talked about this so much over a period of time. There have been significant developments. Yeah, late last night, uh, an 11th hour deal. The definition of an 11th hour deal last night. Morning to you. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, a, it has been, hasn't it? A pretty long and sorry saga. Uh, the Arcadia Group is what we're talking about, uh, run by Sir Philip Green. It owns brands including Topshop, Burton's, Dorothy Perkins, Miss Selfridge, many of those on many a high street up and down the country. But but like many other retailers, it's also fallen victim to a changing high street and pretty tough online competition. And so it put together a rescue plan that involved closing around 50 stores with the loss of a thousand jobs and cutting the rent on about 200 others. But to get that through, he needed landlords to agree to that at the crunch meeting last night. So this is what was agreed. Well, they finally settled on cutting rent at between 25 and 50 percent. That's not as bad as many of those landlords had feared, but it is a significant cut nonetheless. Many of them deciding, look, it's better to have someone in those stores earning them some money rather than leaving them empty. In return, the firm will invest another £50 million into the group. That's on top of more money that's been promised for the pension fund. Uh, so an 11th hour deal, but is it the end of the saga? Well, with me to talk about it, Kirsty McGregor, who's deputy editor at Draper's Magazine. Kirsty, good morning. Good morning. Um, I mean, look, the deal last night, Philip Green has been talking to the BBC and says, look, this is great news, this is a good deal, this safeguards some stores, it safeguards the jobs. But is it really a good deal, especially for those landlords who are having to pay the price? Yeah, I mean, it's not the best outcome for the, the people that work in those stores, for the landlords who are having to cut their rents. But if the alternative was that the company was going to go into administration, which is what they had said, then it's better than that because, you know, they've saved... 500 plus stores and all of the jobs entailed with that. Yeah, and let's talk about that idea that we were all led to believe, weren't we, that if he didn't get this deal through with landlords, then the firm could collapse. And now that's quite a useful negotiating position for him, isn't it? Because frankly, it means that they, the landlords have the choice of no income or some income. Uh, now he's saying, look, it was never the case. We were never going to go on that. Yeah, there may have been a little bit of scaremongering going on, um, but also if we look at the high street at the moment, you know, it is in, going through a really tough time and we have seen some really big household name retailers going under. So I think there probably was a legitimate fear on the part of the landlords that, you know, this could have been crunch time for Arcadia. Yeah, and Philip Green admitting, look, he says, I was very slow to react to a changing high street. I could have done things differently. Uh, one wonders what he might decide to do now. Can he catch up with that online competition? Mm, can he catch up? That's a big question. I think he definitely needs to invest heavily in their own online uh, proposition. But they also have 500 odd stores, um, which is what, you know, the likes of Boohoo, they don't have to worry about that. Mm. So he needs to also look at how he's going to make sure those stores are um, feel a bit fresher and they get people coming coming in and shopping on the high street again. Yeah, what will get people through those doors? Because essentially, you know, we're looking at these pictures of the stores on high streets. They cost a lot of money, whether it's rent or rates. Even before he's, you know, done anything, he's got a, a, a bill of about £100 million a year. Yeah, I mean, he, he needs to make them much fresher, so just a bit of a facelift for some of them. They're looking quite tired, um, if you look at kind of Burton Wallace across the high street. Um, making them a bit more experiential, that's really been the key for a lot of the more successful retailers. So you've got a reason to come into shops um, rather than just necessarily buying the clothing. Um, and I think he probably will need to look realistically at whether they need to close a few more stores. Yeah, and he was described, wasn't he, as the king of the high street. He was the man that could do no wrong with all of these sorts of brands on his books. Um, that crown has slipped somewhat. Can he win it back? Can he get the high street back into shape? Yeah, I think he's king of a high street that just doesn't really exist anymore. That retail model has is, is broken, really. The cost of running those stores is too high. Mm. And we've had sales out, from, for example, from Boohoo Group this, uh, this week, and their kind of growth has been phenomenal. So uh, I think he's really going to struggle to kind of catch up with all of those online players that have overtaken him. Yeah, it's fascinating. We'll keep a close eye on that. Kirsty, good to see you as always. Kirsty McGregor there, Deputy Editor of Drapers. Uh, more from me after seven. See you then. See you uh, It's 20 minutes past seven. Uh, Sir Philip Green's retail empire, including Topshop, Burton, Dorothy Perkins, he's been battling to kind of 
keep it afloat. And Ben, you're taking a look at who he's been negotiating with. It's all about, well, a part of it is about rent. Yes, it is. Um, and it's been a pretty torturous affair, actually, because, you know, Arcadia Group, run by Philip Green, all sorts of names that we know from the high street, Top Shop, Top Man, Miss Selfridge, Burton's, Dorothy Perkins, all of those brands are really struggling uh, to make ends meet when it comes to how much rent they're having to pay, but also rates. And the high street, we know, we've been talking about this for so long, in a pretty tough place right now. So what Philip Green wanted to do was renegotiate with landlords and cut how much rent he was paying on some of those stores because even before he's made any money whatsoever he's paying out about a hundred million pounds just to cover his overheads um, now a lot of the landlords initially said no we're not going to cut the rent because that's just not fair and they all were also worried about other retailers coming to them and saying well if they get a cut in their rent we want the same thing too uh, but anyway, it all came down to the wire last night, a late meeting between Sir Philip Green and the landlords, and they finally came up with a plan. Most of them backed it because, frankly, they thought they were in a position of you know, cutting how much they charge, but at least they would have a tenant. The alternative was that the firm went under and they would have no tenant and no income whatsoever. So this deal involves the closure, the outright closure of 50 stores with the loss of about 1,000 jobs and renegotiating the rent on about 200 others. Now, Philip Green had been asking for rent reductions up to 75%. In the end, he's got something between 25 and 50. So he sees it as a win. The landlords say, well, look, it's not as bad as it could have been. Uh, and we've been speaking to uh, Philip Green. He doesn't give many interviews. He was speaking to our business editor yesterday, uh, and he really described it as a tough negotiation, but one that he thought was in the interest of the company. Have a listen. Many more landlords clearly voted yes than no, right? One landlord wants to make a lot of noise. That's his choice. That's not my choice. But so far as I'm concerned tonight, tonight's about a celebration for our workforce, our supply chain, and... Yes, the market's changed. Now we've got to get to work, grasp this new marketplace and get on with the job. Uh, so that's Sir Philip Green there. Uh, now, clearly, uh, he went on in that interview to talk about how he'd maybe taken his eye off the ball. He'd been very slow to adapt to changes on the high street. So he's got his work cut out now to try and make that work for them again. They've got a bit of breathing space with that reduction in rent. But at the same time, what is so interesting is that in these negotiations, we were all led to believe that if he didn't get this deal through, then the firm could go under. It could go into administration in its entirety. Uh, Philip Green now backing away from that, saying, look, that was never on the table, that was never a debate. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that was quite a useful tool in these negotiations to say to landlords, look, back the deal or we go under. He's now said, look, it was never like that. We were always fine. We just wanted to cut how much rent we paid. Doing a deal, I guess. Mm. That's how things well, work. Known, negotiations. It's known, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ben, thanks so much. Right, you've packed your bags, made it to the airport before the holiday can begin because the weather in June is rubbish here. Um, you've got to pay just to be dropped off at the airport. This is not nice. It's sting in the tail before you even started. Yeah, and the cost is getting even higher, and that's the problem. You don't mind maybe a couple of quid, but in some cases up to £15 just to drop someone off at the airport if you're longer than sort of five minutes. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at that this morning. Thanks very much. Uh, morning to you. Uh, yeah, the uh, website Money Saving Expert has been crunching the numbers, uh, and they found that eight big airports have upped charges for passengers just to be dropped off at the airport. Uh, now, nearly two-thirds of the UK's busiest airports now charge to do just that, even just to drop them at the curb outside the terminal. Well, East Midlands Airport, it's more than triple the cost to £7. Edinburgh Airport doubled it to £15. Well, the airports say that that is just to cut congestion. But what do passengers really make of it? Because there's so much congestion around airports, that there has to be some way to kind of offset that. I guess it kind of depends whose pocket the money is going into. No, I don't think it's fair. I think you should be given X amount of time to drop off and go. No, it's terrible. <laughs> Absolutely not. Because they're using the airport, they're paying money there, they're spending money in the cafes, they're buying things. No, you shouldn't pay. You just literally drop them off and go. Yeah, with that weather, I'm not surprised people want to get away. With me, Megan French is a consumer writer at Money Saving Expert who looked at the numbers. Megan, morning. Look, uh, big risers, and that's the problem. You might not quibble with a few quid here and there, but in some cases up to £15 just to drop someone off. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, and it's perhaps an unexpected cost. You know, it's certainly not the biggest cost of your holiday, but yeah. it's these annoying little extras that can really add up. You know, as you say, in the worst case, you could be looking at £7 for just 10 minutes, 
but the good news is you can often avoid these. Yeah, I'm going to come on to some of those alternatives in just a sec, but you're right about it being an unexpected cost. Do airports and, and, and travel companies themselves make it clear what you might have to pay? Because you'd imagine just dropping off at the kerb, you know, someone's got a lot of bags, that should be free, shouldn't it? So it's generally on their website and stuff, but it's, it's easy. Don't, I've done it myself, dropping a friend off, doing a good deed. You get there and you're suddenly in this lane and I'm thinking, oh, crikey, now I've got to pay. You know, it, it's easily missed. Um, so it's all about planning ahead and just making sure you know what the costs are. If you're not willing to pay them, generally you can drop off for free. Yeah, what are the airports themselves saying about this? Because I touched on it there that they say it's about cutting congestion to stop people sort of accumulating at the front of the building. But there must be a better way. Well, you know, there's a vast difference. So some of, the, some of them it's totally free. Heathrow and Gatwick don't charge for this. Some it's a pound. But then, as we say, we're seeing it go to £7 for just 10 minutes in some cases. So it, it's a big variation. But generally, if you look at a mid-stay or long-stay car park, often you can drop off for free there. So it's just about planning ahead, factoring it in yeah. you might just have to get a shuttle bus or walk a bit. Yeah, and it's sometimes that those uh, those car parks are quite a long way away from the terminal, so if you have difficulty walking, I suppose that's the problem, isn't it? Um, look, let's talk about alternatives then. So what can you do? If you don't want to pay this, where where can you go? What are, what are the options? So if, if you're getting draft up, dropped off just plan that ahead because as we say most you can get dropped off for free but it just might not be the most obvious place so it might be that long stay car park so just factor it in because it's stressful enough getting to the airport on time so just make sure you know exactly what you need to do to get there and you know there's always other options as well you know if public transport's one or if you're booking an airport park you know always book in advance so it's just about working out what your costs are going to be and then working out what's best for you yeah and I suppose it's about factoring all this then into the price of your holidays now as you said it's a small proportion of it but nonetheless something that you need to be thinking about before you make that plan yeah and if you let all these little extras add up you know they're really going to hit you in the pocket so as always with holidays just plan ahead and you get the best price for you yeah interesting stuff Megan thanks for looking at all that for us Megan French there from money saving experts so uh, yeah the advice is always plan ahead and make sure you know what you're going to have to pay and you might decide you want to fly from somewhere else if it's a bit cheaper uh, more from me after eight see you then you've hit a point you've hit a point there you might decide you want to fly from somewhere else you might actually just want to name and shame these airports yeah. oh yeah. <coughs> yeah let's do it yeah we will make them stop so pretty significant events overnight in connection with the high street and yes. Sir Philip Green in particular, Ben. Yeah, this has been quite a few weeks in the making. Uh, negotiations with landlords to try to reduce the amount that he pays in rent on some of those big stores that he has on high streets up and down the country. Uh, and also an agreement to close them. Uh, he's been battling with those landlords to try to get uh, an agreement. Uh, and finally, the at the 11th hour last night, he got a deal to close 50 stores with uh, 1,000 jobs at risk, but reduce the rent that he pays on more than 200 others. He's described it as a victory. Uh, he's really happy with the outcome, uh, despite claiming in these negotiations that the firm could go under if he didn't come to an agreement. This is what he's been telling the BBC uh, after that meeting last night. It didn't come close to collapse. We won the vote. It was a legitimate vote, and it was won. We got a win today, and many more landlords clearly voted yes than no, right? One landlord wants to make a lot of noise. That's his choice. That's not my choice. But as so far as I'm concerned tonight, tonight's about a celebration for our workforce, our supply chain. And, yes, the market's changed. Now we've got to get to work, grasp this new marketplace, and get on with the job. Uh, you'll note there he said one landlord is making a lot of noise. That is into the firm that uh, runs a number of shopping centres, including, for example, the Trafford Centre in Manchester. Um, and they're worried that other retailers will now turn around and say the same thing. Look, we don't want to pay as much. Give us a reduction. Uh, so they're worried about that starting a kind of snowball effect. Uh, but also at the start of that clip, you'll notice he said, look, we didn't come close to collapse. And some suggesting, well, that was quite a useful bargaining tool that he said to these landlords, look, either agree to my terms or we go under and you don't get any rent whatsoever, so actually agree to a cut and things will continue. Uh, and many landlords, therefore, coming to a deal saying that they'd rather have someone in those stores paying some rent, maybe not all, uh, rather than having them empty because they are big stores on high streets up and down the country. Um, so Philip Green, very happy he's come to a deal. He's also going to put a bit of money in to try to plug the hole in the pension at Arcadia. Um, the £25 million pounds on top of another £25 million. There is still a big hole in that. He says he will try to close that uh, but nonetheless this sort of ends the saga so far 
But he had admitted in that interview also that he's been very slow to react to the changes on the high street. So it'll be very interesting to see what he does next to try to compete with all those online rivals that are able to do it in many cases cheaper and much more quickly. We'll see what happens, Ben. Thank you.